I'm Delta Work, and it's time for a very special, very Delta that happens just once a year. It's my birthday, and we are sharing it with the queen of brunch, the one and only Jules Long Beach. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom. Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who wants to have her cake and be mad about it too, because it's never really quite right. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Yeah, it's my birthday. And what do I want for my birthday, Very Delta audience? I want everything. I want everything that I'm not willing to buy for myself. I want bottles of perfume that are super, super expensive. I want all the Tom Ford fragrances because honestly, I'm too cheap to buy them. Specifically, I want Lost Cherry or the Peach one. I don't remember what the Peach one is specifically called, but you know what it is. Just go to, like to TomFord.com, type in Peach. And I want the big ones. Um, I also want, uh, what is that Killian fragrance that, uh, Rihanna wears? I want that. And, um, I want, um, this really specific purse by Nicolette Carlone, which is, uh, it's like a suede purse. And then it has a safety pin like that big across the top. I want that. Um, I love C's candy. So I would always love C's candy. Um, I want to give you different price points here. Um, I also want... Uh, things that you can't physically buy, like a beautiful letter with like a beautiful memory. I think that's lovely. Um, I love origami things that people have made. I think those are super beautiful. Maybe releasing to me a special recipe that you don't really share with other people, but you know that I would probably really, really love and wouldn't share with anyone else because it's a gift. I would only make it and tell people this is a like tried and true recipe. This came from someone's heart, so I can't release the specifics. I love a gift like that. Um, I would love, uh, I like what I call disappearing gifts. So, uh, going out to lunch is a, is a disappearing gift because like once that's done, all we have is the memory. Um, hopefully I don't, uh, lose bowel control, you know, uh, wherever we have lunch, but it's, I'm not going to guarantee. Um, but imagine the memory if it, if that happened, like you'd heard the story and we went out to lunch and then you're like, oh my God, I really did go out to lunch with Delta and she really did shit all over the place. Like that would be a memory. I don't think it'll happen again. I think something that good only happens once in a lifetime, but it is a possibility, probably not a probability, but it's a possibility. Um, I love going to the movies, but I only like going to the movies in the like the early part of the day. And I like reserving the seats and I like sitting like usually pretty high up. You know, I want to sit like in the back. Um, those are some of the things that I want for my birthday. But I also don't expect a gift. But, you know, sometimes people ask and it becomes difficult when some people are like, send me your Amazon wish list. And you're like, well, my Amazon wish list, honestly, is super, super boring. And as much as I do want those things, I think those are gifts for like family members or, or, or super close friends that want to get you something sort of functional. Whereas people who maybe, um, know you from afar, but are like, I, I really want to give you something super memorable. You probably wouldn't want to be the one that wants to buy me the five pack of Ikea bags that I have on my Amazon wish list or my, what I call my airport shoes, which are the, um, those slide on sketcher, like they kind of look like shoes for crews, like the ones that you wear, like when you work at Wendy's or something. Um, those are like my airport shoes. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't want to release that to people because then they would realize like, fuck, you are as boring as I thought you were. 
I never really expect anything from anyone. You know, I, I say in jest, like, oh, I want the most expensive things or whatever. But it always becomes awkward when people ask you what you want because I feel like when you say to them, these are the things that I want, it puts in their mind that you have an expectation that they spend a certain amount of money or they spend money at all. And I am just not a fan of people getting in debt or feeling like money that they need for their necessities to get through the day should be spent to show how much they love you. If you are in that financial space, I think that's great and I do appreciate it. But if you're not in that financial space, and I've been not in that financial space before, um, or maybe still am in, in certain ways, um, I just... I, I think it's an awful feeling when you when you've been conditioned to believe that in order to show someone how much you appreciate them, how much you love them, how much you love spending time with them, that you have to show it in a physical sense with something that nobody else was going to get because it's the most expensive and you had to trek across the world. Not everybody has those resources. Not everybody um, has that ability. Like, just you know, Christmas wasn't too long ago. And you think about like these commercials where there's like a bow on a on a car and it's like. You bought that for your partner and you never had a discussion about the fact that you were going to like mutually spend, you know, $50,000. Like that seems, I don't know. I mean, unless you won the lottery, if I won the lottery, shit, I wouldn't even be over here talking to anybody if I won the fucking, I would disappear, bitch. If I won the lottery, I wouldn't say a word. I'd be like that person that put the mask on and like went up to go claim their money. I would disappear. Shit, if I won the lottery, I'd buy all those perfumes, all of them. I mean, I would like to think I'd be more responsible with the money, but fuck that. I want to buy a few things. Oh, my God. If I won the lottery, I would probably have to go somewhere and have, like, my face peeled off and a new face put on. And I would have to, like pay somebody to crack a whip at my ass at the gym so that like every time I said like I'm done they're like you're not done you're not done and I would just you know become this like specimen of I don't know that I've never looked like before just to see what it was like and then I would you know I always thought when I was a kid if I bought the lottery like if I won the lottery what would I do I always thought if I was when I I always thought when I was a kid there would be a couple of things that I would do if I won the lottery and that would be like I would pay off the homes that like everyone in my family owns, you know, this is depending upon how much you win. You know, if you win a billion dollars, you you can buy everybody something. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice just to have enough money to pay off houses that people in your family own or your friends own. Not everybody, though, just the people that you like really give a shit about. Um, and then all those houses that I post in my Instagram stories, I would buy those shits. Ooh, I would buy one on like the Eastern seaboard. I would buy one in like a Gulf state. I would buy a few in the middle of the country, Kansas, Oklahoma. Those ones that they say are like $200,000 and you're like, this is stun. I would buy those. Um, of course I'd have to have homes in California. I would, I just want to buy homes. I think I would want to buy homes and I would want to furnish them. And I would want like, I don't even know if I'd want to, I guess I really wouldn't want to Airbnb them. What would I do? Live in them all? Hmm. Maybe give them away. Maybe get them and look for people who have no house and put them in. Well, who knows? Then how would they keep up with that? How would they get groceries? They'd buy them groceries for the rest of their lives, I guess. I don't know. I also would love to have an animal sanctuary. That's what I really need to do. I need to have an animal sanctuary with just, the cats and the dogs and the donkeys and uh, 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 reptiles and like all of that. I want to just take care of them. That's like my, I, I would love that. I would love to spend my life in the middle of nowhere just taking care of these animals. That would just feels like, I don't know how to do it. Hire people to teach me how to do it, I guess. When I think of one of my best birthdays, uh, you know, I, I have a hard time saying that it's just one specific birthday, one specific time because... Maybe it's just part of my nature that I feel like it hurts the other people that weren't at that event or who thought that it was a, a, a little better at the, a different birthday. 
But I, I always feel like the the running sort of like common denominator for any extra special birthday is when people who normally don't come out to socialize or normally, you know, have to work or or don't have the time off, make it a priority to come out. Make it a priority to come and, and be there just for a little bit of time because they wanted to make it special. They had it within their 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 time their schedule, their travel ability to do something like that. I've had a few friends that have uh, surprised me in in, in that manner. Um, drag friends, you know, I can remember, uh, you know, my friends like Detox making it a priority, Mayhem making it a priority um, because it just happened to work that way. And it doesn't mean that because no one else could make it a priority that they didn't think it was a special. You know, I always think of all this stuff in like, what you're capable of, like doing the most that you're capable of without harming yourself or hurting yourself or putting yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable. Like I just, I don't feel like if you have a party and someone doesn't come, I don't feel like that's them shitting on you. I don't feel like I've ever felt like you didn't come to my thing and that makes me feel bad. I always, I always worry about like what people are going through in their own mind. Like what Maybe they just can't be around people. Maybe they just feel like, you know, financially it's a it's a struggle or maybe they just straight up don't have a reason. You know, a lot of this stuff has to do with anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety around not just celebrating your own birthday, but going to celebrate someone else because we've been conditioned to believe you're not supposed to show up empty handed. You're not supposed to show up, uh, you know, you're not supposed to go to a wedding wearing a white dress because the bride wears the white dress. And so then you're like, I only have a white dress and that's what I want to wear. And there's all these, there's a lot of anxiety that surrounds celebrating not just yourself, but celebrating someone else and doing it correctly. That's why I feel like it's uh, it can be a lot more meaningful when you do something one on one. I feel like that just um, I would love to say, oh, uh, I want to have a big party. And if you don't come, like it's going to be everything and you're going to miss out and we're all going to wear cocktail dresses and we're going to do this and that. Not everybody is on the same page at the same time, not because they're being fucked up, but because life is happening and their your birthday is not happening for some people. That's just Monday. You know, and they have a lot of shit on their plate and it, and it, uh, sometimes it's not cake. You know, I've lived the majority of my, uh, I live all of my adult life as an entertainer, as a drag entertainer, as a, a show producer, uh, now as a podcaster. Um, so I, I've, I've worn a lot of hats um, and it's so interesting when you do wear so many hats and you do that, uh, this kind of work. Um, you have a lot of different friend groups. And so it's par for the course to utilize whatever event is happening in the life of a drag entertainer as a draw to bring people to your club to see what you do. So it's very common to have one, if not several, birthday parties throughout the course of a week or month that it's your birthday because maybe you're only at that club once a month or maybe um, you're, uh, you know, these out-of-town entertainers are only going to be there at this time and they want to celebrate you. So you see all of those entertainers and you share your birthday publicly with a lot of people. But a lot of those people are just there for, you know, whatever regular Saturday night is happening. So it's an interesting place because people want you to feel celebrated and feel wonderful. But at the same time, you're like, well, I'm also entertaining people here. So I do have a job to do. So that becomes part of the party. I really like having something a little more low key with close friends that very often are also drag entertainers, but we're not in drag. Like we're at a house. Um you know, th this uh, one thing I love is not necessarily having a sit down dinner, but having like snacky things all day. So like at Christmas, we did like a dipsmas kind of thing where everybody brought a different kind of dip and a different kind of chip or cracker or fruit or vegetable. Uh, I love something like that where people can sort of just have small bites and talk throughout the whole night. I do like a birthday cake, of course. Um, I love whipped cream, but I am a huge buttercream fan. So, you know. Do with that what you will. Um, but I'm not going to turn down a whipped cream cake. Just saying. Uh, but, you know, I like that. I like the idea of chilling out with, with friends, really just having no expectation of time or gift. You know, it's... Um, 
Birthdays, I don't think, are the same at seven years old that they are at 17, that they are at 27, 37, and now 47. They're just a little bit different. And I'm also a fan of seasonal things. So, like, when people say, oh, I missed your birthday, no, you didn't. We can go out in February. We can go out, uh, you know, whenever. We can go have lunch. Um, you can buy me a coffee. You can just come over and we can make coffee. You know, that's like that kind of thing. It's not, I say you can take me out. We can, These are for people who are like, I want to do something tangible. Again, not my expectation, but, um, you know, if somebody has the ability or the time, it's great. But I don't think that means that they love you more or like you more or um, life is happening. Life is happening. And at 47, I mean... My friends are in so many different directions. Uh, sounds preachy, but like my birthday wish is that that they're all doing good, that they're all doing good and that they know that um, everything has a season, you know, and uh, those people that um, are super, super important to you throughout your life um, may come back in another season, you know, and uh, uh Maybe won't come back at all. Maybe they're maybe they're in another year and you're just a year behind or a year ahead. And um, I just like to keep the memories, you know, just keep the memories. And I, that sounds weird to some people and maybe a little like poetic or something. But really, that's the only way you can is uh, the only way you can look at every year as something successful is to look at the memories that you've made and know that, well, shit, I'm still kicking around. I can make some more memories. I, I suppose your birthdays are always an emotional time, especially when, you know, you consider I'm not somebody who sets uh, um, I'm not somebody who sets New Year's resolutions. But I definitely think my birthday is a time when I look back at, OK, what happened in this past year? What great things happened? And for me, honestly, 46 into 47, amazing things have happened for me that things that never um showed their face in previous years. This podcast, Very Delta itself, is something that happened in my 46th year that I never knew was going to happen. And I never knew that there were so many people out there that listened to podcasts that would go, you know what? I know you're a little bit crazy. I know you have first world problems. I know that you know, this complaining isn't really going to fix anything, especially in the backdrop of a country where, you know, my very job is threatened by people with guns, you know, that I think people see that. And I, I, my, my, my hope, my birthday wish, if you will, is that when people watch this or listen to this, they know that I know I'm privileged. I know I'm coming from a place of privilege to complain about a soda or, but, the reality is that I never said I wasn't privileged. I never said these are the most important pressing things in the world. I said, this is how I get through life. This is how I get through life. You know, we all have pretty shitty lives. Some, you know, people say, oh, we're all in the same boat. We're not all in the same boat. We're all in the same storm, you know, but some people are in a yacht and some people are swimming. And that's just the reality of it. This past year has really given me uh, the gift that keeps on giving, no pun intended, very Delta. This is this is the gift. The people that I get to work with, the, the 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 subjects that we get to talk about, the people that I get to meet. When this first started, it was like, oh, this is a little replacement. Bring in a couple friends, shoot the shit. I know we're only 25, 26, 27, whatever episodes in. This is its own entity to me it's its own thing and it can go anywhere and it can do anything and it can become anything uh that's the gift like that is last year's gift to me now is that um i can do something more than i did the year before i can do something more with my personality and my weird thought process and um my tubs and tubs and tubs of wigs that I never wear. <laughs> I can do that. And there's a group of people out there that are like, fucking do it. Just keep talking about whatever because it resonates with us because we think these same things too. You're just willing to put on a wig and talk about it and share it and not be embarrassed that, you know, you're waiting for the next time you shit yourself in a restaurant. It's going to happen. I mean, possibly not probably, but. I would like to light my birthday cake because, listen, uh, 
I feel like one of my catchphrases, I should have a shirt or something that just says, said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like I say that all the time. But I said it before and I'll say it again. Don't ask no bitch for shit. Don't ask no bitch for shit. If they give it to you, that's wonderful. But when you go asking, oh girl, this was given to me. This birthday cake, this beautiful, beautiful birthday cake that makes me very, very happy because for two reasons. First of all, it's not like the size of like a quarter sheet of cake, but it's definitely bigger than a single serving. But I feel like because it's smallish, I can be like, oh, it's a single serving for me. Like I can have it and like some part of my brain says like it's just for you. But another part of me knows that this should probably feed 12 people. Um, But I mean, you know, what kind of 12 people really? But my producer, Mark, gave this cake to me. And these balloons, um, because he gives a shit, and um, and that's a gift. See how I do that with nails, and you're mad because you don't know how to do it with nails, but I do. Isn't that pretty? Does it say what does it say on the front? I don't even know if it says happy birthday or oh, it just says let's eat cake. I like that. That's non-denominational. That's um, inclusive of everyone, right? The reason that you're not going to want to have any of this cake uh, is because <clears throat> as I clear my throat, um, I'm waiting for my COVID results. So here we go. There you go. The cake's all mine now. Do you want to see me eat cake? Because I think you want to see me eat cake. Do you want to see me fart on a cake? I think you want to see me fart on a cake. Do you want to see me take a break? So I think you want to see me take a break. If you like drag brunch like I like drag brunch, then you will say happy birthday to my very dear guest, who isn't celebrating a birthday, but I am. So we're going to say happy birthday all episode long. Please show your love to my good friend and your soon to be as well. The one and only queen of all brunches. She put the foundation in drag brunch. The one and only Jules. <laughs> Hi. Happy birthday. How are you? Hi, everybody. I'm so excited. I'm happy you're here. Oh, my God. I, I, it's almost as exciting as an 8 a.m. alarm for right. the first of, like, five drag brunches of the day. Right, yeah. right. That's what you do. Yeah. You literally did create, uh, you know, for us anyway, and, and, and I know it's arguable to some people um, in the world. It has been. Um, but you created a foundation for what is drag brunch, certainly in Southern California, for sure. We had a lot of fun. Uh, for years, our, our slogan was SoCal's only daytime drag. Mm -hmm. It oh, was. Oh, yes. It was. And talk about some trial and error. Right. The Brunchettes oh, is the is the gold standard. There you go. Yeah. And you're not saying that you've never you've never boasted that, but I'm going to say it because I'm part of it. So, you know, <laughs> if I'm, I'm part of it, I want it to be the gold standard. But there certainly are a lot of amazing brunches that happen and which keeps everybody employed. And that's great. Um, but do you, when you think of brunch and you're always entertaining at brunch, do you like going to a brunch on your own, even if it's not a drag brunch? You know, I had never, ever been to a drag brunch. Well, there wasn't one. Well, <laughs> there wasn't one. And it all it all started happening because there was uh, mimosas available and we would go get together at Mar Hamburger Mary's in Long Beach mm -hmm. after a crazy weekend and we'd be having our mimosas and cutting up on the patio. Right. And then, of course, you know, someone decided to go and drag one day and then we're like, well, we could make a dollar off of this. Right. And we had a grand old time. Right. And it, it was very organic. How many brunchettes shows at different locations would you say there have been uh, over the years? Maybe they're not all here now because uh, it's certainly not the same locations. The amount of venues? I don't know. Seven maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And some locations will have like two seatings on a certain day. Some will have as many as four. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's all it's all uh, supply and demand. What's the magic uh, for for an entertainer? What's what, what would be like? What would make a good brunch entertainer versus say like a weekday night show entertainer? It's an interesting question because brunch is a very different animal, mm -hmm. and so some of the things that you would feature and be amazing on stage in a theater production 
doesn't translate the same way at a brunch. Mm-hmm. And then some some things at a brunch, I probably wouldn't want to feature, you know, on the main stage of a big theater. Right. So it, it's, uh, I don't know. I like to think of sing-along numbers and, um, you know, involving the crowd. What do they want to see at 11 a.m.? Right. You know, what are they, they just, they're just waking up. Right. Like, how are you going to wake them up? And how yeah. do you wake them up? Well, I wake them up with beautiful love songs, mm-hmm. and I wake them up with um, fun pop hits. Mm-hmm. And I always like to do staples, like um, like throw in a I Will Survive or a Classic. stereotypical, I mean, some people would say a stereotypical drag number, mm-hmm. but something that if you're seeing drag for the very first time, what makes it fun and approachable to you? Right. And so many people are there for the very first time. So this is how we're going to introduce it and make it fun. And let's get crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. and I love that. I love that, too. Would you um, say that at a brunch, um, that would be like the best place for someone to see drag for the first time? Is that is that the right setting? I, I don't know if it's the best place, but I think it's the most approachable. Okay. It's probably the most approachable. Uh-huh. You can bring your grandma and your mama and your cousin and everybody can celebrate together. And uh, it's a fun, you know, raucous atmosphere, but you're not in a leather bar. So I think it, it is very approachable. Right. Yeah. And do you think like... In the current climate that we're in, uh, because brunch is generally an all ages thing. I mean, a lot of things at a restaurant space like sure. Hamburger Mary's would be an all ages thing. Sure. Do do you find it any more? Do you have to put more thought into anything, or do you feel like if we're doing this authentically, we just do what we've always done? I think with crazy extremist attacks against drag in general, whether we compromise our art for an extreme point of view or whether we decide to carry on with our art in spite of those attacks is always kind of like the fundamental question Mm -hmm. and if if this is your art and art is subjective maybe you should present that art how you feel is best presented nice like that hmm What's your birthday wish for me? Mm. Oh my goodness, I forgot. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. I'm so excited for you. Um, My birthday wish for you is um, patience. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patience. No, my birthday wish for you. I don't know. Um, You know, one of the things I always loved is travel. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could get you to, like, go on a trip with me. Like, not a work thing. I just can't do it. Like, get out and explore. Like, let's go see, you know, the Switzerland of Italy. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 very jewels. Uh, yeah, the the difference between very jewels and very delta <laughs> uh, includes patience, <laughs> includes uh, interest in other places and other things, and the way people do uh, those other things. It's so interesting because we've traveled a shit ton together, but yeah. we've never specifically. I mean, aside from like a Vegas trip or a Palm Springs, something sure. like that, which is very local for us and doesn't really seem like much of a trip because we. We always also have worked in those places. Yep. And we always go partake in our friends who are working in those places. We're just not working in that moment. Um, but you are a person who loves travel. You have got, you've traveled that. pretty much the world, but you've also traveled not just for fun, but to open up Hamburger Mary's locations uh, around the world. Tell us about that. Oh my goodness, it's my favorite thing. Well, travel in general is one of my favorite things. And when you're trying to juggle um, you know, 20 different shows and different personalities mm. and different, um, you know, running a circus. Um, a good way for me to relax and unwind is travel. Mm. Like, let me just, you know, if I'm out of the country and not reachable, then that's going to give me uh, some sort of downtime. Mm-hmm. And so I love it. Like, with especially with uh, Mayhem is one of my favorite travel yeah. partners. Yes. Um, and we'll be like, oh, we're we're going to go to South Africa and we're going to, you know, we're, we just did uh, a trip to Tulum, which was mm-hmm. amazing. And May is down for an adventure. She's like, oh, we're yeah. going to go swimming in the caves. Right. You know, like she's down and we, we all, all of us have been friends for so long, but she is just the ideal travel partner. I love and I'm that. like, hey, let's get out this hotel room and go, you know, do something crazy. And she's like, oh, but that's yeah, who you both are. It. You oh, really are those people. I love it. Yeah. You know, like I'm trying to 
get you to get out the hotel room and go to the strip club with me and you're just like nah i'm good i can't i can't i just i get why but when you when we talk about travel though you have traveled to open hamburger mary's locations places did you when you go to those places do you also have downtime or is it pretty much all work i try to i try to build in downtime Mm -hmm. um and i love mary's as the executive director of entertainment for hamburger mary's international you know it's been my life for decades now right and we have exciting new mary's coming i'm so excited and we're always looking for people who are excited about opening a new franchise right and sharing the gospel of mary's and bringing that fun to your town or your city and you know the beauty of it is here's a book open it up here's all the directions like let's set you up for success right. and and bring more drag to the people of course along with delicious hamburgers mm, uh, delicious when i go hamburgers. to open a new mary's i like to see whole town i want a good picture of the environment it's going to be in mm-hmm. i want to see what else is going on not necessarily um competition wise but just the feel and the vibe and like what do they already have and what can we bring to it what can right. we what can we make um what can we specifically as hamburger marys uh how can we enhance the town right yeah. right well yeah because drag is so uh so different regionally yeah. it really is and uh now with like you know, of course with drag race dragula there are a lot of people in those towns that have that platform as well so they can exactly. be incorporated into that because they're already part of that scenery, that landscape. And so bringing them in uh, and showing not just uh, why they ended up on with those platforms, but all the people around them that are kind of like minded as well can totally showcase that drag. And when people who've been to other Marys around the world go to those places, they're like, oh, I see the heart of the Marys and I see why this one's a little bit different. With the entertainment at Marys, it's, it's all about who's in your city. Right. Like, what type of drag do you have? Right. Are you pageant drag? Are you campy drag? Are you uh, drag kings? Are you uh, spooky drag? What, whatever it is. And I like Mary's to be of true variety. Right. You don't want to see six people of the same, you know, <laughs> six of us, like, going on after each other, all looking the same. Right. And and drag is so fun, and it's open to all, you know, all drag is valid. And so we like to, you know, show all aspects of that. Is this why you, me, and Fina are not in the same show all the time? <laughs> this could be, I think, if that was the case. No, I think Fina's drag is very, very specific to her. And is I think it? your drag is specific to you. And Yeah. I think so. I think Fina's very punk rock elegance. And you're very oh. refined, nuanced elegance. And I think I'm just, the, you know. High energy elegance. dancer. Yeah. High, high energy dancer. High energy dancer, rom- high quality romance. Yes, yes. Yes! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, when I think of brunch, and I think of all of its different phases from, um, you know, just one seating to yeah. <laughs> going to locate, you know, each location needs something different. And like we said, you know, in West Hollywood, there's four seatings because there's people that are constantly, um, sp- they want to be there at a certain time. Sure. Certain people are like, yes, we know that we could come earlier, but we mm. want to be there at that time. That's when we mm. are available. And so it is a game of trying to cater to everyone so you can get, you know, the, the, the maximum, really, attendance all the way around. In the early days of this, though, it was like, Really, there was no other template to follow. You had no. to set that. And what was that like, do you think? I mean, we just had to make it up. There wasn't anything we saw. And remember, this was back when drag was very regional. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no mainstream drag anything. And so whatever city you were in, well, you remember, like, where you were is what you knew. And any the rare occasion we went to see drag in a different city, we were just like, oh, my God. Like, what is that? Because right. it was so insular. Right. And kind of like your town and your culture was all you knew. Mm-hmm. It wasn't shared on the interwebs. Right. Um, so I remember doing paper flyers. You yeah. know, there was no online advertising. I remember going out to all the clubs like on a Saturday night and be like, what are you doing tomorrow morning? Like, come to brunch with us. And there was one seating. Um, 
And we tried it so many different ways. I remember when we first started, it was all group numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was group numbers and choreography. And <laughs> it was all group numbers. I was like, yeah. here's our Spice Girl number. And then we're going to go into um, Sister Act. And we're going to do our Sister Act. And we're going to go into from Sister Act into TV theme songs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and all of that too, and then there was offshoots to just to see, like to test the waters. There was like dining with the divas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what it was called initially, yep. where it was, let's see if people would want to come for early dinner. Give it a shot. We tried the brunch format in the evening, right? Kind of a similar thing to that, and a uh, little matching, a little matching uniforms. You know, Psychedella loved that. Honey. Uh -huh. She was all into it. Yeah, we've tried it. Um, we tried it with uh, all solo numbers. We tried it with groups and solos. We tried it with, um, well, originally you would do a group number and then you would walk around as the waitress with the mimosas. Right. And you would refill the mimosas, yep. you know. Um, one of our earliest casts was uh, myself, Psychedella, Tammy Brown. Mm -hmm. Tammy Brown was like one of the one of the little drag queens that was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Yep. Um, and Sabrina. Yep. Yeah. And this is, we're talking 2001. It's a long time ago. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have uh, tried to lay claim to, like, we are the original brunch, which, you know, who knows? I mean, <laughs> we, well, you know. Uh, I um, don't want to get into the legalities of it. I wasn't it, but... aware of any other drag brunch when we started. Right. And definitely not for years and years. Right. Um, but I'm sure there was other drag brunches. This can't be a novel thing. Right. And because drag was so insular at the time and we didn't have the internet, it's not like now you could just Google, like, Drag brunch, right? You know, uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure it happened other places. That would actually be really fun. Let's find out what's the history of drag brunch. Maybe people can comment and tell us. Well, and too, like uh, it wasn't there. You didn't set out to do like the brunchettes was not set out to be like, let's be the first one who did this and make sure that everyone knows that we're the first. Like that was not the thing. It was just like, hey, this is really fun for all of our friends. Let's see if something can happen from it. It wasn't like, <laughs> we're going to do this. We know we're the first ones. This is the competition. Let's go. Like it wasn't that way. No, it was all born out of necessity. We're going to be here drinking bottomless mimosas on a Sunday morning. Right. I might as well keep the drag on from the night before and make a dollar. Well, and that's how it started. And honestly, honestly that is how it started. Waking up in drag and be like, let's go to brunch. Well, like, and also too, especially around like prides and stuff where oh, people God. are like, you know, there's always that story where <laughs> where entertainers are like, I'm going to just lay like this mm -hmm. and see if I can save this face from four o'clock in the morning to getting to the float at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it happens and it does happen. It will continue to happen. Have you done the drag shower? Explain. When you have a long day of when you have a long day of drag. And halfway through, you're like, oh, things are a little stubbly or things are a little musty. Oh, okay. And say your first show was at 10 a.m. with brunch and you did several of those. And then you have a, maybe a dinner show. And then maybe you have a, a nightclub or bartending shift mm -hmm. after. Somewhere in that day, you might have to take a drag shower where you literally get in the shower mm -hmm. and take a shower, like, neck down, mm -hmm. right? And, and shield the way. It's best if you have a handheld shower situation. Uh -huh. And then you shave nose down. Uh huh. Keep the eyes, shave okay. nose down, reapply. I, I know of people that yeah. do that, and I and yeah. I uh, I applaud them for that, but I don't mm -hmm. encourage it. Um, <laughs> Sometimes you have to. I don't. I Sometimes will reapply my makeup. To. You know how I do. 17 you know, shows in a day, you have to do well, what you have to do. Because you don't say no to work. Well, I yeah, I don't. You've never said no to <laughs> I will say no to work. I will say no to work. I will, um, you know, if the wind blows just the wrong way, I'm like, I'm not, I can't do it. I can't do it. It just happened this week. We were texting this week about work and I was like, take me out of it. I'm not going. And they were like, okay, calm down. It's going to be this way. It's a simple fix. Listen, Mark will tell you, Big Dipper will tell, mm -hmm. Margo, everybody will, everybody knows. Like when you said in the beginning, your yeah. wish for my, for me is yeah. some patience. I love that you said it just happened this week. It happens every week. It does happen every week. It does happen every week. It happens all the time because like, I have no patience. It's like, girl, we got you. It's fine. But you're I, I, the way your brain works initially, it's like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Burn the house down. I'm a defeatist. I'm like, it's, it's, not that, it's, not, it's not that crazy, girl. 
It is. The, you know, let's take a break. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk about why it's that serious. Let's take a break. How do you do it? <laughs> See, I'm a natural beauty with organic laughter. That's how I'm you just, laugh. I'm just here trying to have a good time. <laughs> and you're always coming for me. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's See? How I do there it. it is right there. <laughs> we up. are back with my extra special <laughs> guest, my birthday guest, the one and only Jules. We have been rolling together for so many years, and it's always weird when I say this to people, but literally since the turn of the century. Since the 90s, yeah. Since the 90s, since the yeah. turn of the century. Uh, of course, we met at Oz, like many of our friends did, in Buena Park. We met before Oz. We did meet before Oz. Mm -hmm. And we met at the... 7969. We did meet at 7969. Uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's interesting, because we might have different origin stories. Like a, No, a no, no, universe. it's the same. It's yeah. the same. We met at... P 7969 is Peanuts. Yeah. We, uh, we uh, reference it as both names. Mm -hmm. um, and... There, this was a time when we were still wearing um, stripper platforms. S oh, tall. The tall, tall the acrylic stripper platforms. We were wearing those. It's so funny now mm -hmm. because, like, because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll wear my, my lady, like, uh, Debbie Clears, the single soul mm -hmm. little Debbie Clear. And um, then when the girls, like, they'll be fucking around with, like, you know, platforms. And I remember one of the girls had one, and they were like, oh, put it on, put it on. Imagine you in that. And I'm like, imagine me in that. Like, oh, honey. I think they, I think they forget that, like, we, we weren't were always. Teacher. We weren't always these same people. We've been, <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've been many different women. I've been many different women, and so have you. She's been many different women and a few men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we used to teeter around on those crazy tall Clear acrylic stacked. Uh huh. I mean, yeah. they were insane. Fast forward to like now, my podiatrist is like, you can never wear heels again. Yeah. Here's a prescription like, for yeah. your shoes. Like what? And I'm all, oh, where can I find another pair of rhinestone tennis shoes? Like, well, but so when we met yes. at Peanuts, um, this is again the platforms. Mm -hmm. I think you were probably wearing like. Maybe uh, some mix of denim, maybe? I was. I was wearing, um, I was, well, if we think, I don't know what I was wearing. We probably have a picture of it somewhere. Yeah, we do. If we think of back in the day, I was probably wearing a pair of blue jeans mm -hmm. with a blousey kind of hippie-ish what was that like late nineties? That was the look. That was like, like a ruched top. Like, that uh, like kind of Anastasia was down. popular. Yes, I'm yes. out of love. Like that was Send the look. Me free. And then you know who else was wearing stuff like that at the time was RuPaul. Oh, there you go. Because that was how do I look? How, how do, do I, I feel? Look? Um, and uh, Delta was wearing a lovely, um, if I think a micro floral print, like very Melrose Place kind mm -hmm. of like. Like nine hundred two one zero, like mm -hmm. sheath kind of dress, and what I do remember is we both had flat wigs and eyeglasses on. We were wearing eyeglasses at the time, mm -hmm. and like shake and go wig, like uh -huh. not a lot of teasing. No, we didn't need any of that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. we, we were out front talking. We were fresh. We were mm -hmm. um, new. We were in, in person. We were female impersonators, mm -hmm. and we thought that's what it was. That's all it took. Because really, the backdrop of the time was kind of that. I mean, that's what people well, were yeah. doing. Well, yeah, yeah, it was female impersonation for sure. And we were going to a club that had a lot of working girls, mm -hmm. and uh, I would go dressed up because I was not twenty one. And if you went dressed up, they wouldn't ask. Right. Yeah. Right. Very true. Very yeah. true. Well, remember also at that time. Um, we filmed a sh a movie called uh, Skinwalkers. I, that never came out, did it? It didn't. And RuPaul no. was in it. Speaking of RuPaul, oh she God. was in the movie, and it, it recorded right there. We filmed right there on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Hollywood and yep. Vine. There was a club there. It was called Club Deep. Yep. It's that since burned down or yeah. got whatever. And I remember yeah. we were out. Everyone was outside, and Jules came was coming down the hill. She's like, oh, "I'll be there in a minute." I was a little late. And every, and she looked like if you don't know who who it is, but she looked like Charlene Tilton, <laughs> and she, the hair was just up, and she had these big butterfly glasses oh on. My God. 
the platforms, a cigarette like this, just teetering. And you know, we're talking down the hill in these shoes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that that was a, such a different time. Walking down Vine, and at like you know 11 a.m. Oh yeah, broad daylight, like, and thought nothing of it thought at all. Nothing of it. Like, oh yeah, I'm I'm well, I was stuck in traffic. I'm, like, well, you know what's interesting is even though it was uh, before Drag Race and all yeah. of that kind of stuff, there still wasn't as much like at that time it was. You would see that kind of a lot, maybe because there was so much filming going on. So you, it wouldn't maybe. surprise people. It no, didn't really. it, it, it wasn't because there was a lot of filming going on. You saw that because people were working. Well, not on that corner. Well, not those girls on that there corner. There were some girls on that corner working. But our girls were on Santa Monica Boulevard. Right, which right. Which is a couple of boulevards down. Like each street had a specific right. industry. Right, no, that's and very true. And the boys were in, you know, Vaseline mm-hmm. Alley and the girls were on Santa Monica Boulevard. Right. And yeah, it was very, this was before Backpage and like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. all the ads. Uh, you know who was in that movie with us was also Apollonia. Apollonia was in yes. that movie. Yes. Yep. Oh my gosh. I remember having to make out with someone on that set. Oh, you remember that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did I you don't get remember. to make out with someone? I did on that not set? get to make I I I I don't I don't think no. Did I get to make no certainly not on camera anyway. <laughs> it was also our first dance club. Have you ever been to a silent dance club? Oh, it silent was. Silent dance club. It was. was it your first silent yep. dance club? Yeah. We since we I'm sure we've both done more, but yeah, when you're filming and you're like in the club and you're like, well, and they'll play the music for a couple seconds and then they'll cut the music, but you have to keep right. the, the rhythm. same energy. Yeah. The same energy. Like, yeah. And then everyone just going in, but there's no music playing. And At all. Like, we have lost our minds. At all. At all. You know, I mm-hmm. was thinking because this is like the beginning of the year, it's been hard to sort of, for me anyway, it's always hard to like get back in that momentum from the holidays because maybe um, like work doesn't happen for a couple of weeks after for me, like the way things are scheduled. But I feel like once we get past January, like once I'm past my birthday, mm-hmm. everything starts going really, really fast. And like, honestly, Pride will be here before we know it. I love going to Pride. Yeah, the Pride season really is kind of all year for us. It is. I mean, you can stretch it out all the way through. I think the last one is Palm Springs. Yeah, that first, and we've always loved going to Palm Springs love, Pride. Love. We have to get that together this year. We, we yeah. kind of missed the ball last. We time. did last year. Yeah. 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 There was a lot of other events going on that um, um, we didn't yeah. factor into, but for the, for this year, we we could do something kind of fun. Not, not just events, but just going to hang out. We like renting a house in mm-hmm. Palm Springs with do. a couple of our friends. There's usually like a, a detox and a mayhem and and all kinds of our friends are with us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our buddies, a little Ozma, a little Preston, a little bit of everything. Yeah. It's fun. We have a good time. We do. Um, what do you think uh is your is like your aside from home because home is you know mm. Long Beach is our home pride, mm. but aside from that, like have you been to another pride that maybe is coming up this season that y- you would like to go back to? I really enjoy San Diego Pride. Mm-hmm. I love San Diego Pride. I love the big park that they have it in, and I really like. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's kind of like Pride. It's in Chicago. Maybe someone out there knows. Market Days? Market Days. I know yes! you love it. I love I'm, Market Days. I have your so favorite. much fun at it's Market Days. It's always been your favorite. So much fun at Market Days. But if I had to boil down my number one Pride memory, and especially on your birthday, it's so special, is a very special meet and greet that Delta did oh, for Jesus Pride one year at the CVS. I hate you so Springs. bad. And... Um, you know what? I will provide video and and mm-hmm. photo evidence we need that to. I still have. I actually love it. I mean, uh, I, it, it was a little bit moated in the moment, but then in so reality, good. it is the best though. It is it is truly documented. Um, oh. Do you want to do you want to explain? Delta was just coming off of Drag Race, and we were so excited for her. And you know what? Not just us, but the city of Palm Springs was, and especially your buddy that worked at the at Bill. the CBS, Bill, and was so excited. And so there was a meet and greet sponsored by. Absolute, mm-hmm. um, and it was set up at the CVS in uh, Palm Springs on Pride weekend. On Pride at weekend, like like, te- like eleven a.m. to two or to the one. The timing was a tad unfortunate because mm-hmm. you had all of these Pride activities happening, or you could go to CVS and meet 
Delta in the photo department. Um, and she was uh, doing a meet and greet and they had a little rainbow background. And I mean, it really was super cute. And we were fangirling. I mean, myself and Philip Dominguez and Zach Sire. Like, Zach Sire's an asshole. Up. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. so are we all. But everybody are. was there. Ozma was there. Roz we was there. so excited. A- everybody was there. And it was Davey happening was there. right was after Halloween. And so if you have any super fans out there, I had purchased multiple items of Halloween clearance. Uh, you know, wigs and um, I think there's a, a pair of pantyhose, maybe some ladies protection, uh, a couple different items, definitely a Cody powder. Mm-hmm. And I had uh, Delta sign them at the CVS meet and greet. Because nobody else mm-hmm. showed up to the meet and greet. Well. Except for all of my people asshole did. friends people who all stood there. And then there was a special announcement made. Delta work from RuPaul's Drag Race season three is in our photo department. Doing a meet and greet and signing photos. Come on over and meet her. She's a great woman and a great person. So don't be shy. Come over to our photo department. Everything about it was really cool. And even if you were moted in the moment, um, looking back, like that's just one of the best memories. It was fu- yeah. it was funny. It was funny mm-hmm. then, and it's funny now. But it's, it's so interesting now. because really, yeah. if you if you broke it down, yeah. like she said, like. Our friend Bill, uh, who I had, who I met through that, yep. um, Bill was the uh, manager at CVS, and, and and they had this budget through Absolute, and Bill created this massive basket for me that had all of the uh, Absolute Pride products, and then it also had in it like makeup, uh, just different kinds of oh. powders and. So many beautiful like things. Neutrogena Literally line, got like, paid. Yeah. yeah, all yeah. of the Neutrogena stuff got paid amazing. Like yeah. really, truly got paid very, very well. It's just one of those things. Like you said, there's a list of activities and people are like, well, we know her. Like she works. I I mean, I had been working in Palm Springs at that point. True. 12 years but or I, so. I think it was a scheduling snafu, honestly. Like, let's put Delta's meet and greet up against like the Pride Parade. Like, right. You know, it was whatever. Well, regardless, Things it, was, happened. <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. It was hilarious. And the video though. to this day, that video comes out so at good. least twice a year. So good. Only because our friends, you, yeah. usually uh, prompted by Jules or Zach, will be like, original. oh, I think this video needs to come out again. Delta works from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 3 is in our photo department. Doing a meet and greet and signing photos. Come on over and meet her. She's a great woman and a great person. So don't be shy. Come over to our photo department. I mean, it's so good. It's so good. And I still have all those signed items locked away in the archive. Fucking I still do. I love, you know, I love history and I love our history. (laughs) I love love your history. I do. I'm a huge history nerd. So any museum, I mean, I will go to a museum about stuff I don't even care about. Just You do. You do. But uh, in keeping with that, I like our history. Mm -hmm. And I like when you're over at the house and will like pull out a big box of photos. Oh, that always has to happen. There's always different ones. There's always different ones. And the originals with the negatives. Like, talk about old school. Talk about old school is right. Oh my gosh, just... I love it all. We'll have to put a book together. Should we do a book? We should. That I want to do a lot of books. Delta? Would books be very Delta? This is we the. Do a book. We need a lot of books. Yeah. Let's take a break. And we are back. We're just talking about the old times. We're talking about throat lotion from La Femme. La Femme Cosmetics, the uh-huh. best pigment I still say today. Ever, ever. Hands down. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. I'm not going to tell anybody any secrets about what mm-hmm. we know about it and how we can still get it. But you um, can just give it away. Give it away, give it you away, know what? give I, it away. Um, a lot of times I buy La Femme products online from a great company called Makeup Mania. I um, buy from them. Yeah. Love I buy them. from Makeup Mania you know and I buy everybody. from Camera Ready Cosmetics. Mm. They have all kinds. You know what I found the other day in a box of makeup? Sitting at the very bottom was a pan stick. <gasps> Not the oh, original one. Remember when they the took Krylon it away? The Krylon TV pan stick? Or? No, the, the original Max Factor pan stick. Oh, oh my so God. They got Those rid were of the it. only right ones. Remember they got rid of it yep. and then they brought it back for a minute, but yep. only in the UK? And I ordered some. I found one, and it's still good. It's not rotten mm. or anything. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but it was long enough. Um, this is. Go ahead. Oh, I have a question. So, if you think about the Max Factor pan stick, and we've been in the game and friends so long, there is a timeline of foundations we've mm-hmm. all used 
and we all kind of worked around cosmetics or with cosmetics or you were in beauty school mm -hmm. and I was at the makeup counter mm -hmm. and and we all kind of traded trips and ticks. People say, who's your drag mother? And I'm like, oh. I don't really have a drag mother, but I have drag sisters. Right. We all learned from each other where like we're sitting in a dressing room with like Chanel and Raja and Delta and Mayhem and Raven. And we're all just like, oh, OK, this is how we go. Right. So. I remember using Dermablend mm -hmm. and I worked at the Robinson's May and got my employee discount. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, and then of course Max Factor the pan stick, the original one. Mm -hmm. And then like we've just kind of on on this evolution of different foundations. Right. Today I wear the Givenchy, which I love. I never thought I'd use liquid foundation in yeah. my life. Yeah. It's great coverage. And I swear by it. It's yeah. great coverage. It's beautiful. Um I can remember when Chad Michaels taught me to take like to open up the the pan stick you uh -huh. squeeze it up all the way to the top <laughs> until that little piece falls out and there's a good maybe half an inch of, yep. of cream foundation in there so we would save them up and then you would put them on a paper plate and microwave them shut up I'll, i never Chad heard michaels that taught me this we would what he would he's like this is what you do girl and okay. he showed me how to do it microwave them and then once they would get to liquid you would take uh -huh. them out and then you would pour you would Pull one down all the way till yeah. it's empty, and then and you would pour it. them all in there, and you Shut would watch up. it fill. And then you would take like a, a knife or something over it, and maybe about six or seven of them would fill up a whole other one. Promise you, he probably doesn't See, do this, it now, but he taught me this. Have, this, yeah, I Chad never, taught me that like twenty years I ago. I never got that lesson. Yeah, I've learned some amazing stuff from Chad, and talk about knowing how to be resourceful, sure, and knowing how to be uh, the most like polished professional. Right, like, he is a perfectionist. Right, that's where Everything I got all of my oh, organizing God. with little containers. Oh, it's he all was from the Chad. first one. I learned that from Chad. When we were little baby drag queens, you'd walk in and, uh, you know, Chad was the legend and everything is perfectly with the towel mm -hmm. and perfectly laid out. Oh, my God. Yeah. So amazing. I love it. Well, this is a segment of the podcast called Read Me Delta. This is where people send in letters. Mm. Read Me Delta! If you want one of your letters to be answered, send your letter to readmedelta at gmail.com. They will filter their way through and we will get them. This is our first letter. And a letter opener. And a letter opener. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. That's well, you elegant. know, I have them, but I forget them sometimes. That is so elegant. Look, we're classy today. Hmm. Okay. First letter. Hey, Delta and beautiful, stunning guest. My question is about the art of celebrity impersonation. Speaking of Chad Michaels. Yes. As the number one Olivia Rodrigo drag impersonator in my city, part of the country, how can I deal with other queens who want to perform Olivia's songs on the same night? It's hard not to be jealous and feel like they are coming for my brand that I worked so hard for. Half of these bitches wouldn't know Olivia if it wasn't for my work. Best regards, Olivia Holes. Oh my God, I love that name. Yeah. <laughs> Olivia Holes. Oh, they wow. they are known as the number one Olivia Rodrigo drag impersonator. I don't know where they come from specifically, but maybe the local newspaper announced that that, that was their I title. Mean. Or maybe they did a poll amongst all of the people at the IHOPs well, it, to it decide. Well, it makes sense because their name is Olivia Holes, so uh -huh. I think they've done a few polls. Yeah. 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 So they've 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 polled to see, mm -hmm. and apparently the people have spoken, or because a person would never lay claim to, uh, you know, that they are the best at that. Oh, I think um, they would. I you think, think so? I think that's good PR. Just really? make it up. You know what? Don't wait for a poll. Don't wait for an award. Just tell people I'm the best one. Really? Fake it till you make it. Why yeah. Not? Well, some people do believe in that. You know, mm -hmm. I always, um, uh, when we were talking about Chad Michaels a yeah. minute ago, and and we, uh, I can remember. There's people that will put up a celebrity picture and and it's fun to do it to say like, oh, here's my outfit that's inspired by this picture. Like that's a fun thing yeah. to do because yeah. you want people to know. But there are people that I have known that will post a picture of a celebrity and a picture of themselves as that celebrity and they'll do like a spot the difference or like <laughs> I'm the number one. Some of those are my favorite because I'm yeah. like, well, you don't look anything alike. Right, you right. Know, You're a big are, fan yeah. and that's wonderful. I think that yeah. has to be, we have to break down the terms when we're talking about a tribute artist versus a celebrity look alike. And, um, you know, I, I spent difference. a good chunk of the past yeah. 10 years, chunky, no pun intended, um, 
uh, believing that people wanted to see me impersonate Adele. And then there came a point where um, obviously Adele lost a significant amount of weight. But whether with her new weight loss or even before, I was never the same size as Adele. And I knew that and people knew that. But there was a reasonable Mm -hmm. facsimile where people were like, we get what this is and it suggests enough, but I would never think that I was the number one. I think that's a dangerous thing to do because it also pigeonholes you. You see, Chad Michaels has never, ever said, I'm the number one share. He lets share say that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Which is brilliant. Um, people still want to see you do Adele. Oh, uh, sure. They, they have a I heart. still want to see you do I, Adele. And I like doing it. Have you guys seen her do Adele? Oh, my God. The emoting, the emotion. I love it. You are an actress just right here. Well, just thanks. with your eyes. And very few people can do that. You are like the number one lip syncer I know. It's thanks. ridiculous. But, it, but we can't tell but people. But you portray Adele and the feeling and that tribute, like you're saying, like the tribute artist and the celebrity are looking like celebrity lookalike is so difficult and sure. very few and far between and there was a lot of tribute artists and and do sometimes people confuse the two right probably well you know what's beautiful too is that when you watch people like uh, my favorite thing is to see bet midler impersonators oh my god yes and i yes. like doing my own you little, do a great bet i love my own little I love tribute it. but what i love watching is how different they all look out of drag Mm-hmm. And then watching what they all have to do to get to where you say, oh, you do look like Bet," Because when you look at it, the makeup is so different from one to the other. But it ends up achieving the same goal because you're yep. cheating this feature and that feature. And you're adding in this and taking away that. And some people are like, I have to do it with red lips or it's not as believable. Some people are like, it's not about the lips for me. It's the eyebrow. You know what I mean? I think it's the magic of it. It's, it's fierce. an interesting way to study it as well. If anyone's going into celebrity impersonation. Um, it's an interesting way to sub it uh, mm-hmm. by other impersonators and what they have in common. And those mm-hmm. probably will help you um, kind of filter down what the essentials are. Mm-hmm. I definitely remember studying faces. Remember Kevin Aquan books? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. And when Delta and I were very young, you had to be a celebrity impersonator. Right. Like that was the thing, and at least in our, in our, um, region of drag right you had to have your celebrity lookalikes and so we all we all had our like little celebrity moments and we're like okay we're gonna work on them but girl i mean in this day and age um when people are uh are are impersonating people what do you do like as far as makeup goes for your olivia rodrigo what do you do you know i've never done olivia rodrigo um you i see it in you when i look at you i see it I, I have really it. I do. love her music though, and oh. I and I would love to do one of her songs. I don't know. It's like both of us think that we're Dolly Parton, by the way, especially oh. during Christmas. But, but we always listen, we everybody really gay do feel, is Dolly Parton, girl. Everybody gay girl. is Dolly Parton. And you know what? Whether or not you look like Dolly Parton, I've never not enjoyed a Dolly Same. Parton performer. I thousand oh my percent God. agree. Sometimes the tragic ones are the best. Best. But you feel a spirit behind it. Uh-huh. And so anytime you have a spirit behind a celebrity, I don't care if you got it nailed or not. If you are living, the audience will live they with will. you. This little girl's worried about other people coming for her, What Olivia. do you say to her? Because you work with a lot of people. Oh, you book a lot of girls. Lord. And I've heard the same I've heard the same complaint before. Yeah. I said, uh, well, a couple things. You could make, if you're on the same cast, you can make clear your intention before showtime. So, hey, we're all on the same cast together on Thursday. I plan on performing this song by Olivia Rodrigo. Mm-hmm. Or, hey, I would appreciate if I could do Olivia tonight mm-hmm. or whatever. But but having that in, ahead of time, not, not surprised at the last minute. Like, if you need to claim a song, like we done a million themes before we're like hey this is my song right you know just say it right up front communication is i don't think there's anything wrong with that no i think that 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 is the smart thing and also too like if your community has named you the number one olivia rodrigo impersonator and you know that to be true i think what you need to do is let all these tragic messes who couldn't even possibly compared to your level of professionalism let them have it let them do the number go oh you know what girl why don't you do olivia rodrigo and i'm going to sit back over here and i'm just going to do one of my other like millions of numbers and then i just want to see the crowd and what they're going to think of you and then the next time i show up i'll do olivia rodrigo and then we'll see what they think 
okay, counterpoint to that. You know, you're going to be, you're the number one. You're always going to look better. Who cares if they're doing another song? Right. Why are you threatened by that? Yeah. If you're really the number one, you wouldn't be threatened by that. Yeah. You'd be like, you know what? They love her music as much as I do. We're all going to celebrate her tonight. Let her do and it. And I'm going to come out as the real one. That's what I'm saying. Ooh. Let that ass have it. On the all other right. hand, well, well, don't you have more diversity than just Olivia, though? Like, you need more than Olivia, one act if listen, you're a successful the, entertainer. The people, the people can't, like, we talked about My Dolly Parton. Girl. There's When you think of names, it's like, Dolly Parton, Cher, Olivia Rodrigo. Yep. People want to see ah! Olivia Rodrigo. They can't get enough of oh. Olivia Rodrigo. You should. You can do mega mixes. That's a. That's definitely a brunch go to. Everyone wants to see as many Olivia Rodrigo impersonators, and I believe there's a lot of them. I believe that. Um, I, I, how about I'm, another letter? I'm glad you believe that. In that pretty bag. I love. That this just flew in. And- just yeah, they magically. mail things like this. Sometimes they come FedEx. Sometimes on they... the wings of a snow white dove. Uh, on the wings of love. All right. I do see you as Olivia Rodrigo, though. When I look at you, I see Olivia. Is it Olivia Rodrigo? Mm-hmm. Olivia. Oli- There's another one. Olivia. Oliver. Oliver Platt. I see you as Oliver Platt, kind of. Maybe. The- oh. You're very kind, sir. Look at this. What is this? A J.C. Penny gift card is from the fans. Gifts? Hold on, J.C. Penny's is out of business. No, it's not. It's I still got a around. Gift card. No, there is a gift card right where, here. Where is well, the J.C. Penny around here? Look, that's not even scratched off. That's you the code. That is vintage. It's not vintage. It's brand new. There's I thought they all shut down. Hi, Delta. I know Delta is an intellectual, but what's on her bookshelf? Is Delta a book woman? What magazines are in her bathroom? Which section is she lost in at Barnes and Noble? <laughs> what books does she think are sexy books? Your bookworm fan, very Justin. Well, I think this letter was not written for me. Because, um, like I always say on Instagram, when people are on Instagram, I'll post something and then they'll go, I love this hair on Delta. Don't you guys think X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, this is not a chat room. I posted this. So why don't you just comment and say, hi, Delta, I really like this hair color on you. Or I really think you look fucked. Well, don't say I look fucked up because that would be impossible. But you see what I'm saying? Like, um, this letter wasn't addressed to me because it's not properly like, hi, Delta. Um, I believe that you are an intellectual. What's on your bookshelf? You're saying what's on her bookshelf. So that would be them asking you. So why don't you ask me those questions? See, the thing is. But I appreciate the gift card. And I see myself going to a JCPenney that has Sephora in it. They have one in Lakewood and they have one in Downey. There's still JCPenney open? Yes, there is. I guess you don't know where to find fine things. I guess we should go to Downey. Um, First of all, uh, does Delta read? Yes, she reads people. Right. Um, Anyway. Hi, Delta. Um, what's on your bookshelf? Um, you Perfume. Know what? Perfume is on my bookshelf. Um, awards and accolades are on my bookshelf. Emmy Awards. VH1 Music Award, um, Video Awards. What else is on my shelf? Cats. Figure, head vases. Um, Multiple You cats. know what? I actually, I haven't read a book, honestly. I have not sat down and read a book probably since last summer. And that's fucked up. The, but what I am interested in reading is the um, Prince Harry book. Oh, the spare. Mm, yeah. Honey, the way that they promoted that, you know, it's the fastest. It is the uh, something like the fastest selling uh-huh. nonfiction uh-huh. book like ever. Uh-huh. And the way that they leaked it and like finessed it and came out with the salacious details. I don't know if they did it or the press is so hungry to rip these people. I'm ready for it. Like they I'm ready went for it. in. Have you ever listened to book audiobooks? I listen to audiobooks every day. Every ah. day. On now I was a huge Audible fan, however, I learned about something called Libby. Oh, what's that? So Audible is a subscription service through right. Amazon and it's great. It literally has every book you could ever imagine. Mm-hmm. Um and you pay a monthly subscription and you have like one credit a month you can listen to a book. And then there's a bunch of books included. However, 
on Libby, which is a free app. Anyone can get it anywhere in the U.S., maybe abroad. I'm not sure. You um, listen to books with your library card. Oh. And so you enter in your library card information, or you, sometimes you can even get one through the app, like mm -hmm. in your local area. And so you can check out books from the library, like audiobooks or, or regular digital books. And it's really cool. That's and it's fierce. free. And it's free. And it's, it's an extension of your library service called L I B B Y. And I listened to, I was listening to a, an audiobook on the way here. I love The that. Women in the Castle. Very you. <laughs> the title is very you. I don't know what the book is. The, but the Women in the you. Castle. Yeah. It, it's it's great. I'm not done with it, but it's really amazing. What's another question? Okay. Um, what magazines are in your bathroom? There aren't really any magazines in the bathroom, but when I do go to other people's homes, mm -hmm. I like to look at catalogs that I've never seen before. Um, <laughs> there's a catalog called, um, I think it's a catalog called Serengeti, and I like to see that. I used to love, speaking of JCPenney, thank you for the gift card, by the way. Um, I used to love looking at the big JCPenney catalog. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the big one? I remember the underwear pages. Uh-huh. There would be that. Yeah. And they also uh, had like the bridal section. Mm -hmm. I used to love that. Um, I like looking at, uh, well, back in the day, the International Mail catalog would be sometimes would just show up or oh the Fredericks God. of Hollywood. They just had some sort of documentary come out about the International. Was it the International Mail catalog? Uh-huh. I think so. Oh, I need I to see, see it. it. I haven't seen it. I didn't I know it existed. I want to see it. I just, I read an article about it and I'm like, oh, I need to go watch that. Yeah, I would like that. But all of those catalogs I miss. If I had to guess what magazine was in Delta's bathroom, can I answer the question? Yes. I would say um, October 1993 uh, Country Life. Oh, I like that. That's I what do I would like imagine that. is in like just sitting a little bit. Not a little bit dusty, maybe mm -hmm, just sitting mm -hmm. on the next near the toilet, so you can just like enjoy. Some... Well, on the wall, one of those like oak yeah, on things. the wall. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. Not naughty pine, oak, oak, oak. Because next to on... the crocheted cover uh -huh. doll on top of the toilet paper. Remember, <laughs> remember before bath bombs, there were bath pearls. Oh my god! Yeah, those Sarah Michaels, yeah. something I think like that. October '93, Country Life. Like that. Yeah. I, I, I probably, we probably did have that, but I know that I also used to love, um, uh, like W Magazine back in the day. Mm. Uh huh. Harper's Bazaar, of course. I like stuff like that, but I also love looking at catalogs of stuff just to get an idea. I like the in-depth investigative reporting at Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair has some of my favorite mm. covers ever, 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 ever. My number one favorite cover ever is um, uh, Cindy Crawford and um, and Katie Lang. And I think it was Annie Leibovitz. Probably. That's that it's not great. her Brit. Yeah. And then, well, and then also um, Roseanne, when she was on the cover with the, I think she had an orange or some piece of fruit. She was wearing a, a corset, boobs out, rose in her hair, legs spread wide open. In this, just like it was, just it was a different time, you know. It was a different time when I feel like we you've people... recreated that photo shoot before. I, if not, we need to do it now. <laughs> Remember, we were on the we were on the cover of GED magazine we were on the cover as of GED pinup girls. We were, we were, <laughs> we created pinup. We were. There was no other before. And I still, I, I saw that picture the other day, and I'm wearing a corset top with a, a, a big fluffy skirt, and it's yeah. so cute. Except the corset top, I still had a full bra on, uh -huh. like a nude bra on above it, which is just all like just bra out. Well, I mean, like, we were oh, doing okay. the best with what we had. We were. It was you, me, and Morgan, and we were trying to match oh as much as we God. could. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. It was fun. Let me see this letter again. Who did we? Justin. Oh, Justin. You're oh, very your Justin. Very, very Justin. I don't think we really mm. fully answered your questions. Uh, but I do think books are sexy, and I think being very Justin is very sexy. Don't you think? I think that Delta loves to read. I do love to read. Somebody asked me, what that mouth do? And I said, hurt your feelings. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> oh my god thank you so much for being here Zools thanks for having me my birthday Jules. girl we should uh, we should share the story one day about Zools and why I call you Zools not Jules but that's for another time another place a lot more information a little Maybelline to spread on your face you have to leave a little mystery for yeah kids. a little bit um, this is a perfect way to celebrate my birthday 
I, I love this. I, you know, no, really, you know that I love, I do love celebrating my birthday and I, I, I love um, keeping it just kind of tight. And I think that's what we were talking about in, um, in one of the letters was, you know, keep, keeping things a little bit smaller, a little more intimate sometimes is just the best way, especially as we get older, I feel like. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, who was somebody was saying the other day, like, oh, how come how come you don't go out? And it's like, we 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 work out. No, well, we don't work out, <laughs> but we work out oh, at places. You know what I mean? You've always been kind of like a little homebody, and, and I am. you like to keep it quiet. One, some of my favorite times are when we're hanging out, or like when you'll come over and we'll right. hang out at the house and be chill. And right. I love celebrating you. It's such an honor to be your friend for so many years. And I love you. Happy I love birthday. You. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you all for listening to Very Delta. You can search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every single Monday. And we want you to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can also check us out on the YouTube channel where you can watch the talk show in its entirety with all of the guests. Um, a special hello, by the way, to everyone out there watching the talk show on YouTube. Also, you know what's Very Delta subscribing to mom podcast so you don't miss an episode send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com you can follow me on instagram at delta work and of course where can everybody find you you can find me across the interwebs at jules long beach like jewelry j-e-w-e-l-s jules long beach every time i type in jules in my phone it's just <laughs> j-u-l-e-s and maybe that's your that's your lookalike is jules verne you think that could be your lookalike? No, it's jewels like jewelry. It's jewels like Olivia Rodrigo. Oh. It's very similar. It's very similar. Also, uh, we now have dedicated socials uh, for the show at Very Delta on Instagram and on TikTok. You can see clips and updates and all of that there. And I want you to join me right here next week for another episode of Very Delta. And until then, you can just stay at home and keep things very, very Delta. <laughs> To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. <laughs> <laughs>